There is a time and a place for bulletproof coffee and fat bombs. However, there are loads of better ways to maintain the higher fat intake you're gonna need to be successful on a ketogenic diet. In this video, I'm gonna take you through 14 different ways you can add plenty of healthy fat into your meals. And I've definitely gone and saved my favorite and the best for last. <laughs> Hey Carb Dodgers, my name is Dr. Dan Mags. I'm so glad you've landed on my channel, which is all about achieving lasting weight loss through low carb, real food nutrition. Before I get into telling you what these healthy fats are, I wanna just spend a couple of minutes explaining what I mean when I say a healthy fat, because it is somewhat controversial. Healthy fats come from real food sources and are a combination of monounsaturated, polyunsaturated and saturated fats. Yes, saturated fats can be healthy too. The scientific community has started to change its mind on this. And in 2020, there was this paper published, which is a really, really important paper. And basically said that several foods rich in saturated fats, such as whole fat, dairy, dark chocolate, and unprocessed meat are not associated with an increase in cardiovascular disease or diabetes risk. And that, that we shouldn't be putting these uh, population-wide upper limits on saturated fat consumption because there's no evidence to do so. I'll link that paper down below. But if we eat a wide variety of fats from different real food sources, we will get a natural balance between these different types of fat. So there's definitely no need to worry about eating fat from natural sources. It will not affect your cholesterol in a negative way. In fact, it may even benefit your good levels of protective HDL cholesterol. Eating fats from real food sources and avoiding processed sources of fats, like seed oils, will give you a much better ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids. Ideally, we want that to be as close to one-to-one -one as possible. Two-to-one, four-to-one, absolutely fine as well. But at those levels, it's considered anti-inflammatory to the body. But so much of the processed food we eat uh, has a lot of seed oils in there, and that skews that ratio right up to 16 to 1. And then that level is very inflammatory to the body and very, very detrimental to our health. Now, there are some seed oils which do have better ratios of omega-3 to omega-6. However, there are a number of other different reasons why you really don't want to be eating this chemically treated, artificial, high-processed seed oil. But that is for another video. And trans fats, of course, are always bad. Trans fats are made by basically applying heat and hydrogen to vegetable oils. Uh, the reason they do this is to make them solid at room temperature, more stable in packaged foods, uh, better flavor. However, it's universally uh, agreed that trans fats are detrimental to human health. There's no debate on this anymore. And in many, many parts of the world, trans fats are banned, but not all parts of the world, including here in the UK. But this fits nicely in with the idea of eating unprocessed real foods because trans fats are generally something that is added into processed foods. So if we're not eating processed foods, we don't even need to worry about it. And ideally, a healthy fat should provide us with some other nutrition above and beyond the fat content itself. Very often when people start out on a ketogenic diet, they are drinking bulletproof coffee. And I'm very grateful to Bulletproof Coffee. It was where I started my journey. I saw a guy spooning butter into his coffee while I was away skiing back in 2016. And I was very curious and I asked the guy what this was all about. And the conversation that ensued uh, led me on my low carb journey, reversed my obesity within a six month period. Very, very grateful to Bulletproof Coffee. But fundamentally, Bulletproof Coffee and similarly fat bombs they're just consuming fat for the sake of consuming fat. So whilst Bulletproof Coffee and Fat Bombs can be a fantastic transitional tool, what I teach my clients in my coaching program is after you've gone through that initial phase to start moving on to fat sources that are gonna provide you with better sources of vitamins and minerals alongside the fat itself. So in the list we're about to go through, hopefully you're gonna find some great sources of fat uh, that will give you some other fantastic nourishment as well. So let's get started. Number one, prioritize higher fat proteins. Now I know we're primarily talking about fat in this video. However, 
Getting a decent amount of protein should be the focus for each and every meal. And your choice of protein can naturally provide a great source of fat as well. Take meat, for example. You can choose fattier cuts of meat. For example, chicken thighs rather than chicken breast. They're going to be a lot more moist and flavorful because the fat is where a lot of that flavor comes from. Don't forget you can always leave the skin on as well because that contains a reasonable amount of fat too. You can choose higher fat versions of meat products such as minced or ground beef. These are often significantly cheaper as well than their leaner alternatives. And you can choose different types of meat that are naturally higher in fat as well such as duck. Fish is also a fantastic source of protein. Oily fish such as salmon, sardines, mackerel, anchovies are really really nutritious in of themselves but they'll also give you a boost of natural healthy fat that is rich in omega-3s do make sure you always check the labels on tinned fish because sometimes they are packaged in really low quality uh, vegetable or seed oil so just be careful about those and of course eggs any way which you prefer to cook them Boil them, scramble them, poach them, make them into an omelette. The egg whites, of course, are really, really rich in protein and the yolks themselves are full of fat and cholesterol. And I don't want you to worry about the number of eggs you're eating in a week. There is no evidence that eating eggs does anything bad to your cholesterol, despite the advice we've been given in previous years. Eggs are, of course, a fantastic source of other fabulous vitamins and minerals. They really are a nutritional powerhouse. The second way to add more healthy fats into your diet is to cook with fat. You've got loads of different options here. Either pick your favorite or match the flavor to whatever it is you're cooking. Let's start with butter. Butter is of course very versatile for cooking with or you can just add it to stuff. It's really, really great when you're out and about. You can just ask for some butter and that's a great way to boost the fat intake in whatever meal it is you are eating. Just be sure to make sure that whatever it is you're getting is actually butter because a lot of restaurants will use cheaper butter blends with oils. But when cooking with butter, vegetables are a fantastic base to absorb butter. You can try sauteing vegetables with butter or something like a Mediterranean vegetable tray bake is one of my favorite ways uh, to cook vegetables with butter. Or of course, you can just add a dollop of butter to whatever vegetables it is you are serving up. And whilst we're on the subject of butter, flavored butters are a fantastic way to add some last minute flavor into a dish. Um, I like to make them in advance and keep them in those little ice cube trays that you keep in the freezer. Great way to portion them off and then you can just defrost them as and when you need them. Uh, some great ones to try are things like garlic and herb, chili, coriander and lime, basil, parmesan and tomato. Your imagination is your only limit when it comes to flavored butters. Coconut oil is great for cooking with and it is full of medium chain triglyceride oils. Um, it's solid at room temperature and it works really well for things like um, granola, but it also has a very high smoke point. So it's really good for cooking at high temperatures, things like curries, uh, stir fries, and it adds that coconutty flavor to things, which can be great for especially those kind of dishes. Next up is ghee. Ghee is a form of clarified butter that originated in ancient India. Uh, it's commonly used in Indian cooking and you can get it from the supermarket or it's really quite easy to make your own at home. And similarly to coconut oil, ghee you can cook at much higher temperatures than you would be able to with just normal butter, but you don't have that added flavor that you do with coconut oil. So ghee is a really useful thing to have in your kitchen. Lard, beef dripping, and other kinds of animal fats like that make fantastic choices for cooking as well. Unfortunately, these went out of fashion due to the incorrect demonization of saturated fats, uh, but are making a comeback. 
back and they add some fantastic flavor into your dishes as well. And it's amazing how cheaply these can be purchased if you can find them in your local supermarket. And of course, olive oil. Olive oil is fantastic for pan cooking, for drizzling over food that is already cooked in the same way that you would with butter. Uh, olive oil is very versatile. We don't need to go into any more detail about olive oil, I don't think. Number three is salad dressings and vinaigrette. So whilst we're on the subject of olive oil, salad dressings and vinaigrettes are a fantastic way to increase your healthy fat consumption. Just be aware that many commercially prepared salad dressings and vinaigrettes uh, are either full of sugar or they use really low quality seed oils. But it's so easy to make a simple vinaigrette at home. Here's the basic recipe. Three parts of olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil is great, but avocado oil is also fantastic. Flour Blackseed oil is also very popular. And then one part of acid, usually a vinegar or lemon juice or something like that. Season it with salt and pepper, shake it, mix it, blend it, and then use it to dress your salads generously. Now the reason that salads typically taste a lot better in restaurants than they do at home is your average chef is much more comfortable dressing a salad liberally with lots and lots of dressing or vinaigrette. Now your average home cook tends to be a lot more reserved with those kind of things and the difference is huge. I can't remember which celebrity chef it was on which TV program that told me this, but honestly, it's changed the way I look at salads. And because we're not trying to avoid fat, there is no reason not to dress your salads liberally. Give it a go and let me know what you think. Honestly, it changed the way I think about salads. The fourth way to add more healthy fat into your diet is with dairy products. Cream-based sauces are perfect for replacing the classic higher carb white sauces that are made with flour. Try uh, pepper sauce, mushroom sauce, blue cheese sauce, all absolutely fantastic with steak. Or if you need a dessert or for a special meal, try some double cream or heavy cream over some berries with a grating of dark chocolate. Sour cream is of course fantastic for adding a bit of coolness to spicy dishes like chili. And of course cheese. Cheese just happens to be one of those foods which goes with just about anything. Grilled cheese as a topping on your omelette, on your cottage pie, on your meatball dishes, cheddar, mozzarella, many other cheeses are great for this. Uh, crumble feta cheese over your salad. Try adding cream cheese or ricotta to an omelette or try a cheese plate instead of dessert, just minus the crackers. And yogurt, of course, especially higher fat Greek yogurt is fantastic as a breakfast or as a dessert with some berries and some toasted nuts. Number five is mayonnaise. Now, mayonnaise is just an emulsion of egg yolks, oil, uh, with either some vinegar or some lemon juice and a bit of seasoning. You can, of course, add loads of different stuff to the humble mayonnaise to make it a bit more interesting. One of my favorites is harissa. And again, mayonnaise is one of those areas where there's often a lot of poor quality seed oils involved in their production. So always read the label. And sometimes they're really tricky because They'll even say this is made with olive oil. And yeah, it is made with a small amount of olive oil, but the majority of the oil in there is still this poor quality seed oil. So just watch out for that. I definitely recommend giving making your own mayonnaise a go. It's way easier than you think. Make sure you use a light in flavor olive oil as extra virgin olive oil will be overpowering. Alternatively, you can use something like avocado oil, but it's typically a lot more expensive. If you don't want to do that, there are some good quality commercial products available from specialist retailers. I will link a few of those in the description down below because there are different ones around the world. Number six is the avocado. Avocados are a great addition to salads. In fact, they're a great addition to quite a lot of meals. Uh, one of my favorite breakfasts is avocado, poached eggs, and smoked salmon. Definitely a bit of an indulgent breakfast for a weekend there. They blend really well into smoothies and add a subtle creaminess. Another thing I'd recommend making at home is guacamole. It's way better than the shop-bought stuff. The problem, of course, with avocados is storing them. My avocados seem to go from unripe to ripe to 
ruined within the space of just a few minutes. If anybody has any tips on how I can stop that happening, please do let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much in advance. Number seven is olives. We have, of course, covered olive oil, but you will find olives on the menu of many restaurants. So it is a great go-to dish to get some extra healthy fat in when you're eating out. You can eat them alone, have them instead of breadsticks or nibbles, cook them in stuff, add them to salads, or make your own tapenade. Tapenade is a French dish which is made from olives, capers, and anchovies. Uh, traditionally, it's served on bread, but I really like to eat it with cold cuts of leftover meat. Definitely worth looking that one up if you haven't heard of it. Number eight is tahini. What is tahini? Tahini is made from toasted ground sesame seeds and is used in Mediterranean, Middle Eastern and Asian cuisines. You might be familiar with it as one of the main ingredients in hummus along with chickpeas, but unfortunately hummus is too carbohydrate laden for a ketogenic diet. So why not try baba ganoush instead, which is a really common popular starter in Middle Eastern cuisine. It is made from roasted aubergines or eggplants, uh, mashed together with olive oil, garlic, tahini, and lemon. It's absolutely delicious as a dip with cucumber, red peppers, cold cuts of meat, some spiced chicken. Absolutely lovely, definitely worth trying. Number nine is, of course, nuts. Plain walnuts, uh, Brazil nuts, pecan nuts, macadamia nuts to your salads. Uh, make your own granola, which is great as a snack if you're really hungry. Nuts also blend really well. I really like to blend Brazil nuts into smoothies. Just make sure you're careful with cashew nuts, pistachio nuts, and peanuts, as these are much higher in carbohydrate content than the nuts that I mentioned earlier. Nut butters are also great. Just be sure to read the label and avoid any that are made with palm oil or sugar. Number 10 is pesto and chimichurri. I've grouped these two together because they are both olive oil based marinades or sauces of types, I guess. Uh, they're useful to add flavor to meat dishes, cold cuts, salads. Making your own is by far the best way. There's just no comparison in taste. I couldn't believe just how easy these were to make when I gave it a go. Pesto traditionally consists of garlic, pine nuts, salt, basil and parmesan, all blended together with olive oil. There are a few different versions of chimichurri depending on where in the world you go. There are red versions and green versions, but basically it's made of finely chopped parsley, minced garlic, olive oil, oregano, and red wine vinegar. Number 11 is seeds. Seeds, like nuts, are a great option for adding into salads, blending into smoothies, mixing into your homemade granola. They are chock full of other vitamins and minerals. Sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, chia seeds are really, really popular. Chia seeds are surprisingly high in fat and in fiber. The carbohydrate content might appear to be quite high, but most of that's fiber, so the net carbs are very low, which still makes it a great low carb option. Chia puddings are a great breakfast option. Soak overnight with almond milk and serve with berries and a sprinkling of chopped nuts and seeds. Just a word of warning. Chia seeds for some people can have quite a laxative effect. So if it's your first time consuming them, just go easy with them. Uh, but if you struggle with constipation, it may be a really good option for you. Number 12 is pork rinds. Pork rinds or pork crackling as we tend to call it here in the UK, it's one of those snacks that everybody talks about when starting out on a ketogenic diet. They are absolutely fantastic for that. There are some more interesting ways to use pork rinds too. You can blitz them up and use them as an alternative to breadcrumbs. Try them on chicken, try them on pork, really, really tasty. Just be careful with pork rinds. I guess there's a theme developing here just always read the label because there is often sugar added into these. There's often a lot of MSG added into these as well. Number 13 is coconut. We've talked about using coconut oil for cooking already, but full fat coconut cream or coconut milk can be a great addition to homemade curries, particularly like your Thai style curries. Why not try adding flaked or shredded coconut, either toasted or untoasted to your chia puddings, to granola, 
or to yogurt. Number 14, I promise to save the best for last, is the classic French sauces. Now, I'm not a French chef and I don't want to offend anybody with my uh, oversimplification of French cuisine. However, there are a number of classic French sauces that are heavily based around butter as their primary ingredient, which are an absolutely delicious way to add some fantastic flavor and healthy fats to your ketogenic diet. Starting simply, Burt Noisette is a browned butter which gives it a kind of nutty flavor. Beurre Blanc is a warm emulsified butter sauce. I particularly like making a lemon version of this to go with fish. Hollandaise is an emulsion of egg yolk, melted butter and lemon juice. But perhaps my favorite sauce of all of these is Bernays sauce. Bernays sauce is made from shallots, butter and tarragon. It is absolutely fantastic with steak. It is quite a difficult one to make. I've messed it up more than a few times, but for a special occasion, it is well worth the effort. So I hope you enjoyed that list. So in summary, adding fat to your ketogenic diet can not only help you feel full, but can also add a whole load of flavor and additional nutrition as well. So the trick is to eat enough fat so that you're comfortably full, but not completely stuffed. And hopefully this is gonna prevent you from needing to snack between meals. So I hope this video has given you some ideas about how you can use fats to make your ketogenic diet more interesting, more enjoyable, more sustainable, whilst eating some really nutritious, real foods. Do let me know in the comments down below which of these you are gonna try next. Also, let me know if I've missed any. If you've enjoyed this video, I would love it if you would give it a like, and why not subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And hopefully, I will see you in the next one.